What's up, Oxygen Breather? So I saw a video recently by one Mr. Greg Doucette titled Real World Genetics, where he assessed the genetics of his subscribers. Now, I thought this was a great opportunity because genetics is something that I think is often misunderstood and I think needs to be addressed. See, so many people get down on themselves and say they have bad or terrible genetics when they really have average genetics or good genetics. And even if you have subpar genetics, you can still get a far above average physique, as you'll see in this video. So the last example in Greg's video is the one that I want to focus on. George is not natural, and it doesn't take a genius to say he's got great genetics. Look at this guy. He's standing from the front, arms up. He's got a tiny waist. Looks like he has a tiny waist because the picture is photoshopped. Unless he has the mass of a black hole and he's pulling the background towards him, Photoshopping fitness influencers are among the most fascinating objects in our universe and also the most mysterious. The picture has been photoshopped and you can see above near his lat, it's also being pulled outside. So he's pulling his waist inward with Photoshop and he's pulling his lat and shoulder outward, making his frame appear smaller and his genetics appear better. He might have average genetics, but on Instagram, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, on Instagram, he is cream of the crop. Vascularity in the quads, great shape, wide shoulder, small waist. Don't even need another pose to say, this guy's got good genetics, clearly visible. And again, I thought he saw it and was like setting something up for later, like, oh, ho, oh, it's actually Photoshopped and you can never believe what you see online. But it wasn't a setup, he just didn't see it. And normally I wouldn't give someone a hard time if they just miss something, it's an honest mistake. But this is the same guy who has the laser eye thing, who claims to be able to see everything, to measure body fat always accurately. And to miss something this obvious is really a huge oversight. And front double biceps, you can see massive quads. It's almost certainly that the quads are photoshopped as well. You just can't see it as well because there's nothing in the background being visibly pulled to the side. Very tiny waist, great lat development, wide shoulders. This tiny waist is because it's been sucked in by the gravitational force of his belly button. And the lats, well, I guess the door behind him is, uh, are pulling his lats to the side. So again, you know, this just shows anyone can be fooled, even people in the fitness industry, by pictures, even if it is their job to assess pictures. And from the rear, his back double bicep, it appears to be weak in terms of the V taper. I don't see a V being formed from the rear. That is going to be a weakness he has to work on. He's going to need to work on the lats. Yeah, he has no V taper in this picture because he, he didn't Photoshop this picture. So this blows my mind on so many levels. You're on steroids, so you're not natural, and yet you look okay. I mean, he looks, he looks okay in this picture, but... You don't look great, so you Photoshop your pictures before sending them in, but not all of them, only a few. It's almost like he's trolling Greg, like he Photoshop half the pictures just, just to see what the reaction would be. But it's a genetic test, like why would you try to fake your genetics? It's just, I don't know, just really, really strange. At the end of the video, I was waiting for Greg to be like, he looks like shit in this picture because the other ones were Photoshopped. Look at the door, look at the, ha, I got you, right? It's a, it's a reveal, but... No, there was none of that. And then I scrolled down to the comments and a bunch of comments were like, you know, the last door bender and other stuff like that. So, you know, and then I actually, I wanted to do a test. So I showed the pictures to my wife to see if she could see if there was anything up with them. Here's the video, honey. Mm. All right, so take a guy. look. He's standing mm. from the front, arms up. He's got a tiny waist. So do you, do you see anything, anything weird with this picture? Let me see. You see anything strange? <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. It's not straight. You used the PS. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right? Yeah, I think so. Vascular. Right, let's look the at the other one. Mm -hmm. Great shape, wide shoulder, small waist. You can see here. Don't yeah. Another pose to say, this guy's it got should be straight. <laughs> yeah, you can see. All right, here's the next biceps, one. You can see massive and he uh, also weird. Yeah. Great lat development. Anything else? <laughs> so this just shows you can go from way above average to perfectly average in terms of your frame, your structure, 
just based on a little bit of a, you know, pull an inch here, pull an inch here, not even an inch, just like a centimeter or so can make a huge difference in how people assess you. Now, I'm going to make a statement here that some of you might disagree with, but I think is very, very accurate. If you have perfectly average genetics, 50% exactly midline, right in the median, nothing special, nothing amazing, nothing horrible, nothing terrible, just right smack dab in the middle, you can have a physique that is better than 95% of the general population. You can be in the top 5% despite having perfectly average genetics. So we're gonna look at four factors. First is gonna be your frame size, second is gonna be the muscle insertions, third is gonna be your hormones, and fourth is going to be your level of leanness. The first one is frame size. Now this is a big myth. There are plenty of people who look really, really good, but who don't have a great frame. Maybe their clavicles are narrow or their waist is a little bit wider, and yet they look freaking amazing. You know Arnold Schwarzenegger? He had a pretty wide waist. He would always turn to the side when doing his poses because his waist from the front was not narrow. In fact, it was downright wide at some points. It's a good thing he didn't look at himself in the mirror one day and been like, oh, oh shit, I better give up. You know, <laughs> this whole bodybuilding thing isn't for me because my structure isn't freaking perfect. Lex Wheeler, Phil Heath narrow clavicles. They were not wide people. And yet Phil Heath has won a ton of Mr. Olympias, and he's one of the greatest physiques of all time. Flex Wheeler, he never won an Olympia, but he probably damn well should have. I mean, that's how good he looks. To a lot of people, he has the greatest physique of all time, despite not being very wide through the shoulders. So you don't really know your frame size until you've trained a little bit and until you are not a high body fat percentage. If you look in the mirror and you don't see this, you see this or even this, that doesn't mean you necessarily have bad genetics. It means that you can't necessarily see what your genetics are. Same thing for height. Most bodybuilders on a professional level are not above six feet. Some are, but if you look at most Mr. Olympias, they are somewhere between 5'6 six and 6 feet. And a lot of them who won the Mr. Olympia are below 5 feet 6 inches. So just because you are not super tall doesn't mean you can't have a great physique. Next factor is muscle insertions. Now this is one that Greg puts a lot of weight on, but it's just not as important as some people think, okay? A lot of people have high lats. If you look at Dennis Wolf, He's placed very, very highly in a lot of bodybuilding competitions, despite having extremely high lats. Dorian Yates, his biceps, eh, they looked kind of crap. They didn't look great. I mean, he still had 21 or 22 inch arms. They were overpowered by his lats, just not great arms in general. Still a Mr. Olympia. And I know these are all professional bodybuilders, so it might not seem as relevant to the average person, but your muscle gets bigger but the insertion doesn't change. So if you see someone at the very highest level on a Mr. Olympia stage with some glaring, obvious weak point, why are you using that as an excuse not to train? Because I see people use their genetics all the time as an excuse not to even get started, and which is really, really sad. Number three, we have hormones. Now, a lot of people think that testosterone is like the thing to build muscle. And if you have only moderate testosterone or low to moderate testosterone, there's just no way you're ever going to build muscle. That's not true. In huge amounts, aka injected exogenously, you're going to have a massive impact from testosterone. And I think a lot of bodybuilders do downplay that, which I did a video on here. However, if you're in the normal range, testosterone levels are not a massive predictor of muscle growth. And I think a lot of people, you know, they're buying test boosters, they're trying to like eat certain foods or avoid certain foods or like do some weird rituals to up their testosterone levels. That's 90% bullshit. It's 90% bullshit, but it's entertaining. Don't do that. Um, they are not as important as you think. Plus, if you do have low testosterone levels and it's been measured and it's actually a thing, odds are it's something you can do something about without going on TRT, without going on a cycle, anything like this. Some people do have naturally higher or naturally lower, but again, that doesn't have a massive impact on the muscle building process. And if you are very, very low, it's probably sleep, diet, lifestyle, do you even lift, this kind of stuff. If you live a high testosterone lifestyle, you will have higher testosterone. 
you sit around playing video games all day and you don't really lift weights and you're just sedentary and skinny fat and you're not really doing the things that require your body to produce testosterone, why would you have high testosterone? Okay, so a lot of this, as bad as it sounds, is your fault. And you should jumpstart this process by actually doing something about it, not just injecting yourself with TRT at 18 years old. Number four, we have leanness. Now, if you look on Instagram, everyone seems to be eight, seven, six, five percent body fat. That is not the real world. The average man is 28% body fat in the USA. 28%. So if you are 17, 18%, you look way leaner than the average person. And if you have muscle, you know, you're, you've been training for four, five, six years, you are going to look far, far better than the average person, despite not being shredded. The thing about the real world is people typically wear clothing. And thus, going shirtless, where you look impressive when you're lean, isn't really that important. So at 5% body fat, when you're wearing clothes, you look small, because you are small particularly if you're natural. So I think leanness is overrated. And in the real world, keeping to the mid to high teens is completely fine. So if you think you have shit genetics in terms of body fat percentage, maybe you think you're an endomorph or whatever the fuck that means, you might actually be completely fine. Finally, it's important to realize that Instagram and other social media are not the real world. If you flick through Instagram, you're gonna see a lot of this Photoshop bullshit. It doesn't take a genius to say he's got great genetics. Look at this guy. You're gonna see a lot of people who admittedly have very, very good genetics. You're gonna see a lot of people on steroids or other substances that help them maintain a big jack shredded packed physique year round. Plus, a lot of them don't even maintain that year round. They get shredded, diced up, they take a zillion fucking pictures, and then just splatter those out to you for the next five years. That's how it works. That's the truth. For that reason, don't compare yourself to Instagram. It's a good way to develop body dysmorphia, anxiety, depression, a whole host of other psychological and physiological issues, which you definitely don't want. Compare yourself to the average person. Only 22.9% of U.S. adults get enough physical exercise. And in some places, it's even worse. Only 9.7% of females in Mississippi get enough exercise. And you think with 50th percentile genetics, you can't get a good physique? You can. Because most of the people, they don't even fucking try. Most people, they don't even make the attempt. And even the people who do exercise, how many of them exercise progressively, hard, dedicated? How many of them check their diets? How many of them commit over several years, if not half a damn decade? Almost none. If you go to a commercial gym, yeah, some people are exercising. But how many are training? Not very many. If you have 50th percentile genetics, you can easily look into the 95th percentile, if not the 99th percentile. If you have five years, you give yourself five years and you commit, and I mean you fully commit, you'd be shocked at what you can do naturally. And a lot of people don't do that because they scroll through Instagram or they listen to these people and they just think, oh, well, my genetics suck and I won't even try or I'll hop on PEDs. No, because that's not the truth. Maybe you don't have the peakiest goddamn biceps in the world, but you're gonna live forever and feel fucking good while doing it. So that is all for this video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you were not already. Turn those damn notifications on so that you decide what you watch, not the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you in that next video. Peace.